Hello and welcome. And by way of a break from doing uh, the build of the Ben Buckle Falcon, I'm going to take a look at this new transmitter that I've got. I've been Spectrum uh, since I started flying, but I had a, a, a mishap with the transmitter recently. Um, long story, but basically it got wet. Um, I had to check things out, change a switch, um, change the or check over the gimbal for the throttle. So I wasn't very really confident with it anymore, although it's been fine since. However, I thought I'd go this route, and this is a Radio Master. It's an open system. It works on Edge TX. And it's been a very, very steep learning curve trying to wrap my head around it. Um, but it's a very, very powerful system. And one of the things I'm really attracted to is the use of this temporary latching switch. Now, you can use it for anything you want. That's the beauty of this system. Um, but what really appeals is the idea of setting the trim with the flick of a switch so if you're flying around and you need to put trim into a plane to keep it level the idea is with the temporary toggle you simply flick the switch hold the position and that the, the system remembers the trim settings and sets them however as you can see when you're using this mode having the switch on this side is a problem if you try to flick that switch without moving your thumb, you're going to do very well. Now, one approach is to actually change the switches over. So these two are a pair, and these are a pair, and you can, by taking the back off, swap them over. There's a slight problem with that, in that to gain access to these switches, you need to undo the gimbals and that just doesn't appeal at all however there is an alternative and that's on the back of the transmitter there's a blank plug here and this blank plug you can fit a DIY switch and I have a DIY switch here this particular come in different colors although I ordered a red one a black one came it's not the end of the world and they come as either a, a toggle or a set two-way, normal two-way switch. This one's a temporary toggle. So as you touch it, it springs back and it only latches on or when it's actually depressed. And you take your finger off and it comes back off. The idea is that I'm going to install this into this radio. Now, while I'm very happy at hacking away at balsa and working with metal and doing a little bit of turning and milling and filing, messing around with radio gear isn't my idea of fun. In fact, I hate the thought of it. So, from a rank amateur point of view, this is my attempt at installing this switch into this brand new radio system. Stay tuned. Well, the first thing I have to do is to remove or slacken these two screws which house the aerial. Now, you can get away with just slackening them to get the back off apparently. But because I'm opening the, the thing up, the last thing I want is for these to drop inside the case. So I'm going to take them out fully. Undo that one. Undo this one. And so I don't lose them, I'm going to drop them into the case, the carry case here. So that's these out. The next thing I have to do is take off these grips on the side. And I believe you just pull them off carefully. That's it. So that's one, and that's the other one off, there's both of the grips off, and now there are four screws to remove, one, two, three, four, it gets a little bit more awkward now because for some reason it's a different size 
screw to the two at the top and the only allen key I have is a, this little one so I'll take these out, I'll pause it and once they're all removed we'll come back to see what we can find inside I've slackened these screws off now but before I actually take the back off two things I'm going to do one of them is to take this cover off for the external unit because there are some p delicate pins there and if I put this cover on and don't line it up straight I'm going to damage those pins the other thing is I need to take the battery out so that should come out fairly easily there you go I'm using a 5000 Leon ion battery and it simply pulls out there that's that out so it should now all be fine to take the cover off there's the little plug let's take that out and then it's done with and if I it should come off it's starting to come off well perhaps I haven't got that one out properly Don't want to push anything I'm not never done this before so I'm not sure there we go it's out that one's not out at the top okay okay and can I do it without removing a wire? There's a small speaker wire here. And I believe, if I zoom in, the position for the switch is either here or here. There are two spare slots on the motherboard. And obviously what I would like to do is put it as close to where the actual hole is as possible so I'm going to actually install it into this one here so first thing I'm going to do is to take the screw off the back the nut rather that will hold it in place and there's a washer as well nervous fingers I hate doing stuff like this but Perhaps if I can show other people me doing it, they may be less f in fear of doing it themselves. So that's that disconnected. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to feed this through. There's the rubber grommet on the back. Is to feed that through the hole. Feed this through the hole. Put it through. That's it. That's through. And I've simply got to put the nut on. And I'm only going to finger tighten it. Because I don't want to. It's only really plastic after all. I don't want to break anything. By exerting brute force. Something I've been known to do before. So let's get this through. awkward not to cross thread it I'm trying to avoid that there we go that's going on nicely as I say if you wanted to you could nip it up but I think that's good enough and now it's a case of pushing into I heard that fall out just one of the screws to push this in to here now there are little tabs on it so it'll only go in the correct way and if I zoom into it if you have a look at this there are 
small tabs on one side in, in theory it should only go in that one way um, actually it's easier to put it in here without straining it I think is it? yeah I'm going to pause that I'm double checking this because I'm not sure ok that's now in installed clicked in place that looks ok so put it all back together this is where it was worthwhile taking out this back cover so you can make sure that everything's lined up correctly that's it I don't want to uh, damage the pins That's it, we're in, are we? That's those in place, and now I'll tighten all of these up. Pause it here while I do that. The back is now back on. I took care to make sure that this was clipped in place. I haven't put the screws in yet. But the aerial um, unit is back in place. Time to put the battery in. A little bit fiddly this, but a little bit of patience. That's in. I'll just put the cover, this cover back on. So apologies for that. Obviously, I'm still finding my way around this, and I did say I don't like doing this sort of thing. So everything's now plugged in and what I have to do now is to make sure that it's all working. So if I go to system and I go to hardware check, this is a calibration check to make sure everything's working. If I go down, I've already set SI and SJ to toggle. So if I bounce on there it's been set to toggle I'll just click back out go back and I've done both of them because I don't know which one I've actually plugged it into SI or SG there's no markings that I can see on the motherboard so if I scroll down to find those two switches SI and all spaces on the board and if you look closely at these SI and SJ when I press the button on the back the arrow should move up or down so we're on SJ when I press the button the arrow goes down can you see that so that's a successful installation and that's a miracle for me but one thing I will do is I'll go back to SI because that's not actually connected to anything and I'll just turn it off it's back to none and I've still got SG when I press the button so the idea now is if I'm flying along and I have to hold trimming like that I can just press the button at the back and if I assign that switch to the trim setting function I can get instant trimming of the model so that's a major achievement for me I hate installing radio gear and certainly pulling the back off a brand new transmitter has filled me with dread but it's something I wanted on this set because I want it to be my everyday transmitter so thanks for watching I hope that's useful I hope anybody else that's a bit phobic about messing around with uh, radio uh, equipment is less fearful. And certainly with the Radio Master, there's no soldering involved. Everything's just a plug-in pin. So thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon.